It seems like gaming mice just keep getting lighter and lighter. A couple of days ago, I received a sample of an upcoming 45 gram mouse and I couldn't help but think, how light is too light? At what point are we just forgetting about the real features that made gaming mice great in the first place, like a comfortable shape and light buttons? I'm not disagreeing that lighter mice may improve your aim, but in this video, I just wanna ask to what extent is that true and also share my own experience. I've had the chance to swap back and forth between a ton of gaming mice, everything from the Logitech Brick 502 to many of the ultralight sub 50 gram mice that attract a lot of hype today. So that's what we're diving into in this video as well as this new 45 gram G Wolves Skull Mini. So my gaming mouse journey, like many, started with Logitech's G502 Proteus Spectrum. It had a pretty cool, intriguing design, a ton of programmable buttons, but little did I know this was not ideal for first-person shooters, mainly due to the weight of 120 grams plus. This didn't affect me too much at the time though, seeing as I used to play with an absurdly high sensitivity, that too was not ideal for my own playing style. I then upgraded to Logitech's G703, a medium to large ergonomic and wireless mouse. At that time, that was the lightest wireless gaming mouse that you could buy at around 106 grams. Then I really started to get interested in smaller, more lightweight gaming mice as I started playing with a more competitive intent. So over the last 10 or so months, I've switched from the affordable wireless G305 to the legendary G Pro Wireless, then to the underrated Endgame Gear XM1, and then finally back to the G305, which I use today and am a huge fan of. And now over the course of of this upgrade journey, my aim has improved quite a bit, but definitely has some room to grow. And I mainly attribute this to switching from mostly wrist aiming with a higher sensitivity to using a lower sensitivity and pivoting at the elbow. This allows you to have a lot more control over the virtual distance in game, especially when tracking targets or being more precise. This aiming style is a lot easier and more comfortable with a mouse that weighs 70 to 80 grams compared to one that weighs 100 grams or more. And yes, that 20 to 30 grams is definitely noticeable. And of course, there are plenty of exceptions to this rule. There are many pro players out there that play with a higher sensitivity and rely solely on wrist aiming, but the majority of pro players do pivot from the elbow. If you're unsure of what sensitivity would be ideal for the games that you play, I'd highly recommend checking out a website called prosettings.net. They have a huge database of competitive FPS players in titles like CSGO, Overwatch, Rainbow Six, and Apex Legends. I'll leave a link to their site down below. So now that we have a bit of background to how liner gaming mice can be beneficial for aiming in competitive shooters, let's talk about the super lightweight category of games gaming mice at 55 grams and below. And the gaming mouse that inspired this video is this one right here, the 45 gram G Wolf Skull Mini. This is a pre-production model seeing as the mouse hasn't been released just yet, but at 45 grams, not including the cable though, this is the lightest gaming mouse that I've ever used. But does that actually make you a better gamer? And while my experience with other super lightweight gaming mice has been really solid so far, I do still prefer to use something a bit larger and heavier as my main mouse. Take the Final Mouse Ultralight 2, for example, coming in at around 50 grams. I'm personally a big fan of this mouse, apart from the fact that you can no longer buy it, but unless you are using a fingertip grip or have really small hands, it is pretty much impossible to use. Forget claw gripping or palm gripping this mouse if you have medium to large hands, not going to happen. My experience with the glorious Model O- was a similar story. Although slightly larger than the Ultralight 2 and more user-friendly for claw grip users like like myself, the super lightweight is heavily outweighed by the fact that it's just personally uncomfortable to use. Cooler Master's MM710 mostly fix this, providing a nice large support at the rear of the mouse as a point of contact for the base of my hand. But with this mouse, I encountered other issues like the main mouse buttons pinching my fingers. So moving on to the G Wolves Skull Mini. To put this mouse through its paces, I opened up Kovacs Aim Trainer and messed around for about 10 to 15 minutes and then tried to beat my previous high scores set with the G305. 
For reference, that mouse is about 80 grams with a lithium AAA battery and has a shape mostly ideal for claw grip users. So over the course of about an hour, my scores gradually kept increasing one by one, but they were still a decent margin off what I had achieved with the G305. Specifically, accuracy was quite a bit lower and my aim didn't feel as steady. I will say that out of all of the ultra lightweight mice that I've tried, this one has the biggest shell, so it's a bit more user friendly for the masses, but this kind of creates this odd feeling, making the mouse feel empty and hollow. In that sense, it's a bit weird to use and definitely takes some time to get used to. The other thing that you give up with these super lightweight mice is a wireless connection. Generally, this doesn't bother me too much. It is definitely something that you can get used to, especially if they have lightweight cables that are used with a bungee. But in the case of the G Wolf Skull Mini, the cable is on the thicker end. This isn't an issue for smaller mouse movements, but for bigger sweeps, the cable whip can be pretty noticeable. So coming back to the question of this video, can ultra lightweight gaming mice improve your aim? For me, I feel like my aim has definitely improved by switching to mice between the 70 and 80 gram range. At that point, gaming mice are light enough, but still have great build quality, buttons and shapes, and you've even got a few wireless options out there too. But going even lighter in weight, you do start to trade off a few features. Wireless is out of the question, and generally you are restricted to very small options, only appropriate for smaller hands or those with a fingertip grip. So maybe we are losing sight of what actually makes makes a great gaming mouse. There's a lot more to it than just weight. After all, if that were true, all professional FPS players would be using a variety of the lightest mice available, yet the more popular choices are commonly around that 80 gram mark. And that's where I think the sweet spot is at least for now if you are looking for a new gaming mouse. There are plenty of great options around that 65 to 80 gram mark. The G Wolves Hardy, for example, I consider one of the best all round mice at the market right now at 61 grams, because although it is extremely light, it's not too light that it starts affecting other critical areas of the mouse. And there's also much room for improvement for gaming mice when it comes to other features, for example, a lightweight cable. At the moment, still nothing feels as good as paracord, and the buttons and scroll wheels are still something that companies manage to mess up. But if you are interested in upgrading your gaming mouse and potentially upgrading your aim in first person shooters, I will leave a link to some of the better options that you can find today down below in the description, as well as a link in the top right hand corner to a video I did recently discussing those very options. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.